today working on a 2000 Honda Accord with the four cylinder. Uh, issue is, is when it's running, the customer complains that it, uh, customer complains is that it runs rough. Uh, I believe it's misfiring. I don't know the whole entire history on it, but I believe they took it to a, a local shop or a local dealer in my own home. I believe it's the one I always talk about. And they paid twelve to fifteen hundred dollars or something like that, and put a bunch of parts at it. It's got new plug wires, new plugs, distributor. I I don't know what else they did. There's a bunch of stuff they did for twelve fifteen hundred bucks, but it's still misfiring. And it only misfires at uh, idle that I can tell. Um, so what we're gonna do, and when you rev the engine up, it uh, it seems to get better. So we're gonna read the codes. Got the Honda program loaded up here. We're gonna see what codes are in the history. Got a 301 cylinder one misfire, 302 cylinder two misfire, cylinder four misfire, and then a 1399 misfire in any cylinder. So it's basically misfiring in every cylinder except number three. And it could still be because of the other 1399 code. So there is no, as far as live data on these older Hondas, there's no cylinder per cylinder misfire data you can go off of. I've looked through all this. I even lented the EOBD, the mode six data, the tolerances. There's no data that supports. It says there's a misfire, but it won't tell you each, each individual cylinder. You'd have to use an oscilloscope uh, to find that information out if needed. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start it up and let it idle and we'll pull up some scan tool data. So we got it running here at idle. It's got a little bit of a shake to it. You can see it there. Shakes a little bit at idle. But if you look at the scan tool here, I already got inside the car. It's not as noisy. So I can feel the steering wheel shake a little bit. Um, but if you look at the data here, we're in closed loop. So we're using the old two sensors. Engine coolant temps, 155 almost. Not completely warmed up yet. Put in, you know, look at the temp gauge on the right there. We're still a little cold. So we're still warming up, but what I noticed is the short and long-term field trims are very negative. Like at negative 25%, short-term negative 9% long-term. So 0% is, is perfect, ideally. So anything above zero, positive is add and fill anything below zero is negative taking away fill well you want to be plus or minus five to seven no more than ten percent because then you'll throw leaner rich codes and if you have these two together you're talking 25 30 35 percent negative so it's taking away feel based on something we got to figure that out and that's why i believe it's misfiring some other data engine rpms air intake temp you know, if this was real cold, the intake temp or the coolant temp was real cold, I'd be like, okay, well, it's adding fuel based on those parameters. I'm just making sure those things are working as advertised. And then I'm reading my O2 sensor before the cat and after the cat. So if you look here, this one is 1-1. One, one, so that's before the cat. That's the one that's doing the uh, trimming of the fuel. One after the cat. Is monitoring the catalytic converter, make sure it's doing its job. So I can definitely feel it misfiring right now at idle. It just it feels like it just got a dead spot, like it's surging almost. Probably can't really tell in the video, but I mean the steering wheel shakes a little bit. I can feel it surging slightly. So if you watch those field trims, what did I do with them? What the heck did I do with them? Right there. So let's get rid of these little two sensors. So there's my fuel trims. I'm at idle negative. Man, that's crazy, 25%. Like on a Chevy, I know is at 20 or 25% positive or negative. When it reaches that threshold, it'll throw a leaner rich code. This hasn't yet, depending on the data from the manufacturer. So if I rev it up a little bit here, I get off idle, it goes, it, fuel trim's damn near perfect. Gets better. And it doesn't shake. It's just very smooth. Real smooth, no shaking. It's like it's not misfiring no more. So if I hold it there at like eh, 1500 RPMs, 
I'm at 1500. Negative or the short term is pretty close to zero. The long term would eventually correct. That's over the longer time of the period. But so if I let off, go back to idle, it's it's misfiring, shaking. Well, it's negative 22, negative 24 percent. That's why I believe almost 30 there, 27, 30 negative. So that's why it's misfiring because it's taking away field based on the condition. So now what we need to do is determine. There's only a few things that can cause a uh, you know a rich condition. You know, not enough air, maybe plugged air filter, field pressure regulator broken, injectors bleeding down, leaking. O2 sensor line, a heater circuit in the L2, um, EVAP system issues, coolant temp or intake air temperature line. So we're going to go through it and troubleshoot this and see what's going on. All right, so I pulled up oxygen sensor before the cat, which is the blue one, and then one after the cat, which is the green one. So the blue one, zero to one volt, zero meaning lean, one volt meaning rich, 450 volts and under is a lean condition 450 millivolts and over is a rich condition so that blue line should have your cross counts going up and down the other one the green one i'm not concerned with right now but that's time if your cat's doing its job that should be around four five six seven hundred millivolts steady if it's matching the pre-cat o2 sensor that means your cat's bad and you can get a 420 code for bank one or a 430 code if you had two banks for bank two which i'm not concerned with that now this thing seems like it's you know kind of lazy, right? It's not the most the best cross counts. Now there's probably a heater circuit in this, and if you have a blowing heater circuit in an oxygen sensor because it needs to heat up to, for it to do its you know chemical reaction job. So when I rev up the gas, of course it's gonna be more emission gases and heat flowing, so that would help that out. If I rev it up, see if it helps out at all to like 2500 by 2500 and you can see that the right here my 3000 you can see that the cross counts is so much better for bank one sensor one before the cat so it's picking up that but when we're letting it idle it goes we'll see where it's at here now it's rich and then it went lean so anything above 450 millivolts is considered rich. Anything below 450 millivolts is considered lean on a narrow band O2 sensor, meaning zero to one volt. So I've seen other vehicles where the heater circuit is not working correctly and it's not keeping the O2 sensor warm and the uh, O2 sensor is giving wrong data to the engine computer. So what we can do now is we can do some O2 sensor checks. Uh, we can check the field pressure regulator, some injector bleed down checks determine why this thing is running rich all right so we're still running i got a new graph up but i want to show you the green line here is your oxygen sensor bank one sensor one before the cap my chart i have set up is zero to one volt so there's your half a volt 450 millivolts we'll just call it a half a volt right anything below this line is considered lean anything above this line it's considered rich so if it's above this line like it is now it's going to pull field it's going to pull field away because it's it's running rich according to the L2 sensor. The blue line is your short term field trim bank one, negative 25%. That's that blue line. The graph down here, I got negative 30 and a 30 there, positive 30. Negative 30, zero, positive 30. So if I'm above a half a volt, that means I'm running very rich. It's in a rich condition, which it does there. If it gets below this line here, it's going to be running lean. And I expect this blue line to drop down. And look, it just did. It went down below the half, and then it went down there. It went down again right there. It went down. It's down there. It went down. And their field trim's more or less negative. But when it goes way up here, our field trim's going to get, eventually it'll get more negative, which it is right there. So that's why it's running rich. I mean, on the graph, seeing it, it's above that this mark. Anything above this, where my finger is, it's going to run rich. And it is. Look at negative twenty-seven percent. So, what we want to do now is I want to do an O2 sensor test, make sure this thing's responding accordingly, and we can re-graph this, and we can do some other checks. Like I said, field pressure 
regulator and uh, injectors. Something's causing this thing to run rich. What we ideally want to see is these, this O2 sensor, I want it to go all the way down here, up here. Not just below a little bit or at the line. I want to go all the way down and up so you get your full effect. Because right now it's just anything above a half a volt, it's or 450 millivolts right there, it's considered all rich. Well, if it went cross counts up and down the full range from zero to one volt, then it would run according because it's always making adjustments, lean or rich, lean or rich, because it's a narrow band. A wide band, you have a lot more, uh, I guess, more accuracy, you could say. But this is a narrow band. So now, what I want to do is um, basically do some more checks, like it's, like I said on the old two sensor. I'm trying to think if that's the best way moving forward. Do old two sensor checks, um, signal checks on them, and then the fuel pressure regulator, and you know maybe it's an evap system or air filter. Who knows, right? But it gives them good data looking at that chart graph on the uh, scan tool so we did take a look at the air filter obviously it needs to be changed um, I'm not saying that's the problem but it, it's not going to get as much air with that obviously and it doesn't look like it's affecting our, our field trims a whole lot but it's not for sure ain't helping the matters um, I guess we're not you know I'm not saying that's the issue but definitely needs to be a new one installed so I always look at that because if your air to fuel ratio is off based on something like this um, obviously that can have negative side effects as well but obviously there's still something else going on because of our negative fuel trim so I mean that's an easy check but obviously it needs to be replaced all right so now what we're gonna do uh, I'm just gonna show you some other testing methods I just want to make sure all these cylinders are sparking right because say if one's not sparking uh, they would have a, a rich condition, which we can hook up the lab scope, do secondary ignition on all this, you know, but hypothetically, it, it may or may not be the case that if an injector, or not injector, the plug wasn't sparking, then we would, uh, you would have raw fuel on burn in there, and that's what's picking it up, you know, from the L2 sensor, which is right there. So, what I use is a test light, incandescent, not LED because it'll blow your bulb out. Brake lines work good for a ground. While this is running, you can pull one plug at a time and take it to ground with the test light and make sure we got the spark. So he's gonna grab this one first and just put the test light in the end. He's gonna keep the test light close. He's gonna keep the test light closer to the end of that than his hand and he won't get sparked. Okay, don't stick it in all the way. You never heard that before, have you? All right, so you can see we got spark there. Pull out a little bit. More. There you go. Good spark. Plug it back in. We're going to do each cylinder like that. Put your test light close. Next. Next, you can do this as a cylinder drop test too. If it changes RPMs, and uh, good, so they're all sparking from the ignition coil, the distributor, and the lines. But you could use that for other situations as far as you pull them on. If your cylinder, if it drops, RPMs change, then you know that cylinder is not the issue that's causing it in relation to spark. So now we're going to do some more tests and go from there. So I don't know if you could hear that that test we just did, but the RPMs did change on every one, so that tells me that we got spark on every one. Uh, if it didn't change on one of them, that would tell me we need to go look at that cylinder, but they all had an RPM drop, so uh, that tells me that the spark plugs and the wire integrity for the spark plug wires is all good. All right, so I got RPMs here, 770, 80. Go ahead and pull the first one. Watch the RPMs change and listen. Changed. Second one. Changed. Third one changed. 
fourth one changed. So typically, if you're gonna do that much longer now, you wanna use a test light because you don't wanna have those ignition coils uh, or spark plugs just, they're, it's kinda hard on them. Not for the little time that we did it, but if you're gonna do that excessively, you wanna take it to ground so you don't uh, overwork the ignition coil so that energy can go somewhere. So that means the wire integrity for the spark plugs, the spark plugs, all that stuff's good. So now we gotta continue down our uh, path of troubleshooting and see why this thing is running excessively rich only at idle. All right, another test we can do. You can hear me here. There's the purge solenoid that comes from the gas tank that goes into the manifold. I took a vice grip and plugged it off because if the purge solenoid not electronically, but mechanically, if the diaphragm in there, if the diaphragm, the purge solenoid was ripped or torn, it would let emissions go in there and cause a, you know, excessive feel, which in turn the computer would pick it up and try to, you know, compensate for that. But with it closed, plugged off, we still have, you know, real negative short-term field trim. And our L2 sensor is above the 450 millivolts. So we graph that. 450 is right there where my line finger is. So it's still way above it. So that's not the issue there. Um, another check we can do the field pressure regulator, pull off this line. If that diaphragm in there was ripped, there'd be fill all over this, which it's not. It actually runs a little bit better because now we got a vacuum leak compensating for that extra supposedly feel so it sounds smoother but it's not leaking so feel pressure regulators out of the question evap out of the question air filter out of the question what we want to do now is want to i'm going to do some o2 sensor tests real quick and then also i might have to do an injector bleed down test which I have this kit for it right here, which I'll show you how to do that once if we make it if we need to do that for this car. Another thing I check for is coolant temps 183, intake air is 125. So if these numbers are like the coolant temps said like you know 140, 150 or whatever, then I'd be like, okay, we got a issue with that. It's trying to get more fuel to warm the engine up. But these numbers look good to me. That's not the issue. Um in the vehicle, when you first start it up, it's an open loop, meaning it doesn't use the O2 sensors to trim the field. It runs awesome. Until it gets in the closed loop, it trims the fields, and then it just runs like crap at idle until you bring it off idle, and then it runs fine. So we'll do some O2 sensor testing in the field uh, injector bleed down test next. So I want to check now. I just want to check the O2 sensor heater circuit out. So I got my breakout leads from my AES kit uh, what I'm looking at the engine harness side the black with uh, was it yellow tracer is the 12 volts power and then the black with the white is the ground so we're gonna put these leads in and make sure we have power and ground coming from the engine so right now just watch that dongle in there he's gonna turn a key on engine off Watch that dongle. Hang on a sec. All right, so turn the key on all the way, engine off. There's our voltage. So we got 12 volts, battery voltage. That means the wiring coming from the computer is giving power to the heater element. That's good. Now let's check the ground side. All right, so now I got it to the other pin, the ground side. Uh, obviously, we got a good ground there. The computer controls the ground on this. Now we're going to check the internal resistance of the heater circuit on the O2 sensor. Now I got the male breakout leads for the heater element into the O2 sensor. And I got 13.8 ohms. So that's, uh, I'd have to look up the specifications specifically, but that tells me that resistance is good to go. So I looked it up. It should be between 10 and 40 ohms. We got almost 14. 13.8 specifically. So that means that heater element, it's not blowing. So that's good. The computer's controlling the heater. I just wanted to check that because if the heater wasn't working correctly, you know, your O2 sensor would be running richer. 
or could run richer. And I've seen that in other vehicles for a real quick check. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I want to check the O2 response test, they call it. Um, just to show you guys some other little tools you can use. So I got a back probe into the signal wire. How do I know it's a signal wire? We can look in a wiring diagram or you look at the DMM, digital multimeter. We got 600 millivolts, right? I know it's going zero to one volt, but the DMM is RMS, root mean squared. So it's taking an average. Since I don't have a wiring diagram for this right now, that's how I determine that. Because I know the other two bottom wires are the O2 heater circuit and ground. I check this one. That one's a ground for the signal wire. So that's the signal wire going back to the engine computer, which we have voltage on. It's RMS. Yet in an oscilloscope, it would read, you know, supposed to read zero to one, but obviously we're staying high on the uh, scan tool. So I'm going to pull up my live data again. And what we're going to do is take a test light to the signal wire, go to battery positive, battery ground. Um, yes, there's going to be 12 volts instead of one volt going to the computer, but the internal resistance of the computer handles that, and it's just a real quick response test. I've done this on several vehicles. There's been no issues with it. It's just to prove that the uh, response of the L2 signal wire is wiring going back to the computer is all good to go. All right, so I got the test light hooked up to battery negative. Key pin in there. I'm going to hook the test light up. Why am I using a test light? So if anything was to go wrong, that light bulb would act as a fuse. Negative 15% in the short term. You can see our readings there. 0.8, we're 0.7, we're above it. If I take this test light, make it go to ground, look, look at the reading on the chart, took it all the way down to zero volts, so it's considering it's a lean condition now. Look at our field trims get better. Look at that, significantly better, 0.8%, how much better that is. Now it's going positive because it thinks it's lean. So it's going the opposite way of a rich condition. See, it's going back up because we're zero volts, right? Because we took it to battery ground. Well, if you look at your pot, now we're positive field trim, very positive. But now, if we unhook it, let the computer take it back over. O2 sensor goes back up to what the O2 sensor is actually reading. The field trim is going back. This thing will focus ever. Going back down from positive. It's going to eventually go negative again. Because the O2 sensor is picking up that. That just tells us that the wire integrity to the computer is all good. Um, that's why I believe we need to do an injector bleed down test next. After we finish this up. But look, it's still... Way positive, O2 sensor, and our field trim is going way negative. So it's correcting itself to back to originally where. If we do the same check, hook this up to battery positive now. And go down here. If you look now, we're maxed out on the voltage. One point, anytime I max it out, it always goes to 1.2 volts, it seems. 1.2, 1.3. So now it's saying it's a rich condition. So what is the field trims doing? It's taking a ton of feel away. Negative 27%. It's not moving around. It's stuck on there. Because we're, you know, we're at one above the 450 millivolts. It's stuck up there because we made it stuck. We're negative 27%. That tells us the wire integrity is good. So if we unhook this now, let it back go back to where it was. O2 sensor is doing its thing, reading the oxygen content. The short term field trim is correcting itself back, right? It's still going to be way negative because it's actually, no kidding, running rich based on another condition. But that just proves there is our oxygen sensor, our O2. Uh, or which is our O2 sensor, 
um, is working as advertised and the wire integrity back to the PCM or PGM FI, what Honda calls it in this case. All that's good. The heater circuit's good. So what we want to do now is check out the fill injectors and see if they're leaking down. All right, so moving on. That test there just told us that the wire integrity back to the uh, engine computer is good. Uh, we did check the O2 sensor heater circuits, uh, the side from the engine side and the actual heater element were within all the specifications, so that's all good. Um, the O2 sensor is responding accordingly. Of course, when you give a gas, it responds better. So, I mean, I'm not saying maybe it is a lazy L2 sensor. The other test we could do is uh, put like, you know, propane, like an actual, not the flame, obviously, but just propane into the intake. See if it responds that it's going rich to pick that up. Um, just want to make sure it's not a lazy L2 sensor, but between that and maybe there's an injector that's bleeding down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to run home and grab my main master fill injector test kit because there's a banjo fitting on here you got to put on there and we're going to use is this little injector tester here made some leads on it so what you do is you prime the pump so say you're reading 50 psi you turn this thing on for you know short medium or long pulse it's in milliseconds so say if cylinder one goes from 50 to 48 cylinder two is 50 to 48 three is 50 to 48 and say four hypothetically goes from 50 to like 35 or 40 then that would mean our injector's bleeding down. It should be within a half a PSI of each cylinder. So we'll do that test next with this tool. But we've got to run and grab the uh, fuel pump tester. On some other vehicles, newer vehicles, you can do all that with the scan tool. But these older ones, you have to have this older tester um, type to be able to check that. But we'll go from there and see why this thing is running rich only at idle, which is causing it to misfire. Um, but it's definitely misfiring. I mean, I cleared all the codes. As soon as you read them again, it says there's random misfires through all four of the cylinders. So we'll grab that tool and check our injectors.